Hello everyone and welcome to a short talk on how to fund your startup and keep it too, as well as happy 2022. My name is Dirk Riele, I'm a professor of computer science at the University of Erlangen and I specialize in supporting startups. So here is one of my uh, startups, uh, NetDoses, which developed uh, captured drug dosage information for underserved demographics. Uh, pharmaceuticals get drugs approved based on testing data for the default human being, sadly the 35-year-old white male. And the drug dosage for children or pregnant women may vary significantly. So doctors know about that, have practical experience and net doses collected Wikipedia style such information from uh, physicians, uh, put it into a database and provided good software around it. NetDoses was funded by the EXIST Gründerstipendium, a very common uh, master student based funding mechanism in Germany. It gave uh, my team each about 100, uh, 1200 euro a month and uh, about 12 months of runway. So after the 12 months were over, the product was not complete yet. No large customers had bought and motivation went down. We decided to shutter the company, sold it to ID Berlin as a trade sale because we simply could not find investors to keep this otherwise very promising idea going. And this is sadly a very common experience with Exist Gründerstipendium. So what happens is, and there you are, a team with a great idea. You're about to finish your degree and now you want or need some money to live while you turn your fabulous idea into a startup. Exist Gründerstipendium is there to help. Uh, as I said, a stipend and about 12 months of runway. Your energy goes up, your hope goes up. You're working hard on your product and then funding ends and you have no follow on investment. Hope tanks, you're not getting any funding, most give up. So why is it so hard to get follow on funding for exist Gründerstipendium if because almost certainly you're not profitable uh, after 12 months? Why is it so hard? Why is there this gap that I call Death Valley here? Well, here's how seed funders, that's this initial stage of funding, uh, look at uh, you. Everyone looks at the team first. Are you capable? Are your skills complementary? Are you hardworking? Then they also look at the product and its market potential. If there's not enough money to be made, there will not be an investment. So for the public funders, the state who gives you exist Gründerstipendium, team and idea are good enough. For private investors, that is not good enough. Private investors, even the early stage investors, at least in Germany, require to see some proof of your idea having a chance in the market. So that means you need to have sharpened your value proposition. You need to have some sort of minimum viable product ready and first paying customers. That is hard to acquire that is hard to do in 12 months and yet seed investors private seed investors would like to see that before they invest the money here's another example from my startups uh, this is additive that uh, additive provides github style collaborative working on office documents you can cleanly separate out the authoring of a document from reviewing it and merging the work of multiple different people into one final document. So this came out of my PhD students research work. We acquired Exist Forschungstransfer. We acquired Exist 2 as follow on funding. We acquired Business Angel funding and so forth. The total amount is uh, well, at this time of speaking was up to a million uh, euro. Because it is a different funding from the Gründerstipendium, 
my folks got actual salaries uh, on the TFL E13 pay range, so between 4,000 and 6,000 euro. And obviously that is a nicer deal. So here you can see the comparison between exist Gründer Stipendium, what everyone will point you to, and then what I call here public research and development projects like exist Forschungstransfer, but also a huge number of other projects. And the difference is that Gründerstipendium is really just to get a startup going with minimum cost, while public R&D projects will give you a real salary. They give you a certain amount of time to work and they will not interfere if it's public funds with what you're doing. So you have nobody on your back telling you to go left, to go right. And then you can extend one project with another if the time is not enough. So 18 plus months uh, rather than 12 months. Continuous extension with more projects if you want to. A uh, real salary rather than a stipend and also based on what the project wants to do, much more uh, capital for investing in uh, computing resources and so forth. So there is just a lot of such public funds. Uh, here you can see a timeline of how I have worked with my PhD students and others in the past, uh, how I have funded through public grants, the initial research, the uh, validation of that research for market purposes, the incorporation of a company and even beyond uh, beyond uh, the founding of the startup, further public funds to extend the runway until companies hit uh, the next funding stage of profitability. It is huge. There is a lot of money and exist Gründerstipendium in my book is simply looking in the wrong direction. So let me return quickly to this idea of runway. Why? Is it such a bad idea to get these 12 months of Exist Gründerstipendium runway and then nothing? Because once you've gone through Exist Gründerstipendium, you're anchored in that perception of outside parties. That's what they wanted to do. They believed they could do it in 12 months and there is no follow-on funding. That's when you fall into Death Valley or the trap. So runway is so important because time is not arbitrarily compressible. You simply don't know when your value proposition, your unique selling proposition has become crisp and convincing. You just don't know for sure that within 12 months, your minimum viable product that customers are willing to pay for is out the door and doing its job. You need to acquire customers. That is a lengthy process, possibly, depending on what type of software you're doing. And most importantly, if you want follow on funding, don't believe you can just walk into the door of a VC or a business angel and convince by your sparkling fabulousness. Uh, it is hard and they want to see you over and over again until they start trusting you. That takes time, a lot of time. Best is to start with being in touch with potential investors already during your degree program and all the way continuously interacting building rapport, building credibility. And then, even then, it's hard to possibly convince them. However, if you are actually able to use the runway to build believability, to build, to show or demonstrate some traction or some improved track record, there's a lot of added value from that because now investors look at you and you're more valuable because you've survived, because uh, you have a minimum viable product and your value proposition is believable. You now get better options and investors. You don't have to contend with just anyone who's willing to invest. Maybe you get to have a pick. Also, as your company is more valuable, you get to keep more of it. There's nothing worse than having to give away half of the company in the first round of investment because nobody wants to do that. Uh, you don't want it, certainly, but also the investors don't want to take away all your motivation to work hard. So there is a, a zone, so to speak, what is a good investment in terms of how much equity you give up stock in the company for what amount of money. 
And this continues over time. If you are a typical Silicon Valley startup or aspire to be one, you have these stages of funding and you need to hit these milestones and you need to have that growth uh, and you need to only ever give appropriate amounts of stock away for outside funding in order to keep things balanced, yourself motivated and your company in a worthwhile investment. So this goes, so I'm basically suggesting this to you students, but it's also private investors, business angels who come to me and bring me uh, their teams because A, if they are not sure yet about the investment, uh, the public funds, public money that I can possibly channel um, will give the teams additional runway. And this way the business angels uh, get to reduce their own risk and naturally they will, they will stay in touch with the team. Uh, but even if they already invested, uh, the public money strength stretches their own investment until the next investment round comes around. Even the business angel is interested in the next investor not gobbling up all of the rest of the stock. Um, they have to usually tag along for uh, maintaining their stake in the company. They are interested in you not giving away the whole company, but only reasonable amounts commensurate with your growth stage. So even the investors, even seed investors, see the benefit of public money and there's no conflict here. So if you want my help, find your team. Remote first is fine. I don't care much where you live, um, at least you, unless you have a German work permit. Um, you need to have a good idea uh, with market potential. And if you want to, you can take a look at these links here where you can find uh, already existing uh, possible grants for you. Let me tell you though that it is a huge number and that it is an arcane, arcane discipline knowing how to get those funds. So you can try yourself even without my help, uh, but typically you won't be eligible because you need a university to run the funds through and then getting the grant proposals written right is quite its art form. So I have my staff for that and I regularly do it with the startups I'm interested in helping. So if you're interested, be in touch early with me. Public funding takes uh, uh, time. And so I hope to see you uh, in any case, whether we hear from each other or not. All the best for 2020 and your 2022 and your entrepreneurial ventures. Good luck with it. Uh, all the best. Bye bye.